Hi everyone, today is Tuesday, August 16, 2011, and uh, today was all about this spike right here. We all knew that the, um, the whole Euro rescue thing was coming up today. It's it's become just ridiculous. I mean, I, I've i stopped caring what rescue they're talking about. They, they seem to be in a constant state of rescuing themselves. Um, I suppose today was the 517th announcement from the important leaders of Europe stating what they're going to do about saving their continent. And um, they said some things and it shot up and then shot right back down again. So actually pretty interesting action. Um, my portfolio was showing a nice profit. It showed a loss for a few moments and then went back into profitable again. So that was an interesting ride. Um, as before, um, let me just touch on some um, daily charts here. I just want to go through some indexes. These are um, not in any special order. Let me just walk them through and talk about them some. All right, NASDAQ Composite. Um, and in many of these cases, the, the theme is going to be maybe we're done with a push. Maybe we've got some more pushing to go. It's a little unclear. Um, but uh, the nice thing, I think, about what happened with the market um, in the past several weeks is that it provided a lot more clarity in terms of uh, where the market's going and what the important levels are. So that's a, a relief. Um, so in this case, we've still got our uh, resistance here at about 2,600. We have recaptured more than a couple of hundred points uh, of um, this loss. And will it push all the way back? Could it even possibly push all the way back up here? I think this is certainly likely. This is a lot less likely. A lot of overhead supply here. NDX, the NASDAQ 100. Got a kind of a neat little pattern here. Um, the uh, I've highlighted it here in profit charts. And uh, kind of a broken... Uh, right triangle here, and I have taken the liberty of drawing the base here. You know, it's not set in stone. Uh, it could go higher, but that's... I'm pretty happy with with that illustration at this point. Excuse me, a little typo. Dollar OEX, the S&P 100. Um, pretty nice head and shoulders here. Shoulder, head, shoulder. Nice clean definition on this range, about a 42 point range. Uh, fell, satisfying that target. It's been pushing its way higher. Here again, a little bit more room to go possibly, uh, but not necessarily. And I was, um, the, the one bad trade I had today um, was, of course, my long hedge. Um, I have reminded myself that in this market, in this very uncertain market, I really don't want any large positions, long or short. I want to emphasize that. It's not that I just want to be totally short, although I am. Uh, it's just I don't want any large positions. I just want lots and lots of little positions because there are many wonderful opportunities on individual charts. I'd rather not speculate in a very broad basis what any given index is going to do overnight. That's just, no, no thanks. So, uh, took a loss on my IWM long, and uh, that carved out a portion of what would have been a really, really good performance today. So I had a good day, not a great day. Uh, Russell 2000, speaking of IWM, um, very uh, interesting pattern going on here. This was uh, a resistance line for a while, which when it broke above it in December 2010, kind of marched higher, and we've fallen beneath it and are going back toward it again. So this is the first little interesting area of resistance, uh, followed by, and many index charts look just like this, this particular resistance level at 771.71. Um, eh, kind of a head and shoulders. I, the right shoulder is higher, so I'm not you know thrilled with that, but definitely very, very plainly defined um, uh, support resistance level there. The big one, S&P 500, our resistance level here is 1249.05, and very interesting line here at 1227.08. Um, this uh, was somewhat meaningful when we busted through again in December 2010. We are beneath it and are re-approaching it. 
uh, very, very close. So close, in fact, that I've been getting more and more interested in increasing my shorts. Uh, I have presently 82 uh, sh short positions. Again, uh, I don't think any of them account for more than 1% of the whole portfolio. Uh, and 80 possible other positions that I'm keeping an eye on, but aren't quite high enough for me to be comfortable shorting yet. The utilities index, I've mentioned more than once. Uh, this index is boring and humdrum as it sounds, was a very important um, uh, precursor in the 2008 drop. Uh, extraordinarily well-defined head and shoulders here, which w once broken in September 2008, um, did some very exciting things. Different pattern this time. We've got this ascending wedge, which has been broken and repenetrated. Um, this to me is a fascinating pattern. It goes back more than two years. Um, very encouraging for the bears. XBD, uh, security brand dealer index. Couple of different possible resistance lines here. One of them here, more conservative one, 94.16. And then uh, this kind of tilted one here uh, doesn't really come into play until about all, about 99 or so. So if the market did get strength from God knows where, uh, it could get back up to approaching 100. If indeed the market uh, remains weak, we could just see this kind of like um, slither down. Uh, let's look at a few other odds and ends here. Oh man, it's typo day, isn't it? DIA, the diamonds. DIA, uh, this is the ETF for the Dow Jones Industrial, of course. Uh, we've got a couple of lines here, one at 114.91 and the higher one at 118.24, uh, you know, like 400 Dow points off. The theme here again, are we done with the recovery or does the recovery have a few hundred more points of gasoline in the tank? Uh, the ES, um, this one, and I'm gonna resize chart a skosh here like so, and we'll turn the pointer tool back on. Um, so this uh, symmetric, triangle that was broken. So, you know, if you were going to make a bullish argument, I think the most ambitious uh, you could possibly make it would be around 1270. That would be a very aggressive, I think, um, argument um, if you were just hopping up and down bullish. 50% um, retracement is at 1222. So we actually got above 1200 today and yesterday. So we're very close to that. Um, but again, this, this Fibonacci level and the underside of this broken uh, symmetric triangle uh, both suggest um, a barrier that probably won't be crossed. GDX, I've kind of gotten a lot less interested and less active in the precious metals. They're just kind of in a world of their own. They kind of do their own thing. Uh, today, gold was quite strong, up over a full percent. Um, and GDX was down a full percent. Uh, GDX clearly not behaving the same as gold. This is not a proxy for the metal. This is the miners, of course. Um, as long as we don't go above 6171, this remains an interesting chart. Uh, this is probably, uh, it's very important. And if if we break beneath this range, if we break back beneath around 52, um, I think all asset classes are heading lower. Um, IWM, I'm not sure if there's much to say here. Uh, a couple of resistance levels here, 71.83, and then higher up 76.56, but a very, uh, all these very bearish looking patterns. In Q, uh, it's uh, an hour after the official close as I'm typing this, so this is already down five and a half points. I imagine because of Dell, uh, I saw that Dell was, um, let's just take a peek here. Dell is currently down s over 7.5% um, because of their results. So uh, I guess that can't be helping the NASDAQ. Here we have uh, a, a more plausible uh, probability that the retracement is over uh, because this uh, range was uh, broken and retraced rather quickly. Um, and so, yeah, I could just head down from there. Uh, and then finally, uh, for the moment, I just have a few more items here. IYR real estate, very interesting chart here. Um, we had sharply, sharply ascended in real estate 
And then back as far as uh, spring of 2010, the sharpness of this ascent stopped and we went to this more uh, easy going ascent. So all the kind of like fast, easy money was made in the first year or so and it kind of eased over and now a new direction. Uh, we broke the calmer trend line uh, back on August 2, fell hard and retraced to this level at 57.59. So were, one, were I to be short this, which I'm not, I actually don't have any ETF positions for the moment. If I were short, I would set my own stop level at 57.60 because that's a very, very nice looking graph. And of course, if you're just loony, DRV and DRN are the triple uh, bullish and bearish real estate ETFs. The last thing I wanted to say is that as I'm looking at these triple bearish ones, um, how can I put this? If the market wanted to fall hard, this would be a great time to do it because as I look at these EDZ, FAZ, SOXS, these are all charts which, as I suggested in a post earlier this morning, if you just showed the chart to someone and said, gosh, what should I do? They're all screaming buys. These are like beautiful bullish chart formations. So just to be clear, these are triple bearish instruments. They will go up a lot if the market goes down. And given the fact that all the bearish ETFs, the ultra and the hyper bearish ETFs look so attractive, it's interesting to note. So um, that will be it from me. Appreciate your time and attention. And uh, I will um, see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody.